Hello, big beautiful world. Today, we've got the Chilton DW1. I, uh, it's funny, I bought it the other day and I memorised all the specs so I could impress you with my, um, my prodigious memory. And of course, I've forgotten everything. So, all I know is, I want to show you a few things that make me really... This is from A1, uh, A1R, the A1R Bureau, the same crew who bought us what I consider to be one of my favourite aircraft, the Ryan STA. You basically see the framework and it's just that beautiful delicacy that they've put into it, not just the burning, you know, the, the polished alloy of the, the nacelles and the cowling and so on and so forth and the, <laughs> and the extraordinary wheel spats, but rather for anyone who knows the geodetic designs of Barnes Wallace, like the famous Wellington bomber and so on, there are times when I, when, when I flew this the other day and I thought, wow, okay, so that's really, really thoughtful texturing. Um, I love it. I just... I do love it. I love the Ryan and I instantly fell in love with this thing. So let's hop in. Now, as you can see, I mean, the six on this is just incredible. You got two for oil, you got your pressure and temp, you got your whiskey, you got your altimeter, you got your slip and turn, you have your speed, yeah, speedometer, and you got your RPM. But you do not have any kind of VSI you do not have any kind of reference to the water uh, and I do think hang on can I do this again let me see let's see if I can actually walk around so we're walking around via FS realistic yeah okay so we see air cool okay so it's an air cooled donk not sure what it might be a gypsy miner at a guess but, um, sorry about the levitation. Seems to be a quirk of FS Realistic. It never used to be there. Here, yeah, this is a better way to see it. Okay, so you can see the ever so subtle framework ribbing. And that is just craft to me. I don't know why, it just sort of floats my boat. Anyway, let's hop in and uh, get her up in the air. Little things, not much comes with it. Uh, the pilot's handbook is good. You get your doors down, which is really cute. Um, it's more about the sheer joy of the flying experience on this. The rudimentary, I think it's 30. Oh man, I'm guessing. I'll say 35 to 37 on this puppy. So it kind of falls into my idea of fun. Uh, battery. We've got our have a look fuel on all good comms yeah cool come on kiddo come on kiddo okay oh, good that's better why won't you do anything there Look, I don't care. I'm not flying with comms. We <laughs> so so do not have to do that. Mags, one and Clear two. Prop. Good. Now we should have everything. Nice and simple. Very straightforward. I'm down the prop. And we've got no. So we're flying out a quick run, cold stream down to um down to Turidan, uh, here in sunny Melbourne. Uh, we've got the live weather on, so I want to see how it behaves because it is a bit of a glorious day today here in uh, down at the bottom of the world. Now, as you can see, it's got a hell of a idle on it. Just wants to run and run and run. Uh, from the other night's flight, I think flying and landing can be a handful. Sorry, uh, takeoff and landing can be a handful. That's can flying. I do like the white track. Um, the white track uh, landing tractor. I think it's very adds for a nice stability. So over to our right, we've got uh, you know far off, pretty much on a northwest parallel. There we've got um, Lilydale Airfield, but I just wanted to take off out of Coldstream for a change. 
Can I bring the throttle up? I won't bring it to full throttle because I think there's still a bit of work in the torque space that maybe the A1R Bureau crew could do with this. Just wanna, there we go. Up and we're away. And that was really, really crap, but that's okay. Because once we're off, it feels good. It feels really good. And it's a good looking beast. Very British, very, actually, I, I can actually say with that weird chauvinistic thing. Kind of Australian, because the Percivals, the early Percivals, early Miles. Um, what else comes from that? Actually, you know what? The early message from the M1. Uh, the little uh, sports toy, the little uh, trainer, the sports sports era. Predecessor to the Typhoon that we've now got for mini builds. Um, let me just get rid of that clipping. Thank you. So yeah, uh, it's just a really... Look, I think it's worth it. I really do. I, I don't know. It's a bit pricey for what you're getting. And when I took it up the other night, it was this kind of instant gratification. Might as well go straight south over the dandies. We'll take her up past uh, Alinda, Sassafras. Over to our right we've got Seville. Oh sorry, over to our right we've got Lilydale, over to our left here we've got Seville, Cold Stream directly in front of us I think. Around northeast Melbourne. The flight shouldn't be too long. But I know, you know, it's funny we all went out and immediately bought the 225 the Ash Well I know I did well not immediately. I kind of checked the bank balance first. But um yeah, put the Antonov 225, and I will get around to flying that. And I, I, I marvel at the amount of work that's been put into it. It's just extraordinary. But, um... You see what I, It's totally seat of your pants in this thing. Like the Ryan, the Ryan has a bit more hardware on board. From memory? Yeah, I'm pretty sure it does. Uh, but this, this is paired back, at, think of it as an early Carmen gear or, you know, an MG midget or TF or TD from the 1930s. A little sports car, a tiny little sports car with bugger all in it instrumentation wise. And that's really kind of, um, you know, so if you pledge your boat, grab it, I say. I think, it, like I said, it was about 26 bucks Oz. Did I mention it? I am now. At 26 bucks on. And like I said, I thought, you know, not a lot of bang for the buck, but once I saw the detail on it, and the, the flight model itself, where you just, you know, it's all stick and rudder all the way, and seat of your pants all the way, it, it was love, just love. In spite of my appalling, a couple of touch and goes in it down at Turidan, uh, so <laughs> the next one probably won't be much better but as you can see it's got a decent enough speed you know you're running it at around 100 mph 97 to 100 and, mm, 105 I think the specs were 110 maybe but as you can see it's up and down like a yo-yo very sensitive on the instrumentation but incredibly satisfying strangely strangely strange for me anyway not unlike the Mini 500 from um, from Got Friends, and you know I don't know why I'd liken it to a rotor aircraft, but yeah, it has that kind of you've got to kind of watch everything you do, which is a delight. That's that's kind of a way I like flying, especially for short hops. Not so much for longer hops. You know, we all like our um, we all love our autopilot for the bigger runs and so on. But yeah, so I went out and grabbed the Antonov. I also went out and bought the Boo, the Caribou, which I'll have to take up because that's a bit of a bit of Australian history right there, even though I think we only ever had a little over two dozen of them. But we worked them hard for the best part of 40 years and uh, in the RAAF. And um,
Ah, Castle is striking off. I'm well under 500 above the house. It's not healthy. But we is that where we is at? It's our simulator. We can do whatever the heck we want. I almost swore. Again. Yeah, so I bought the boo. Uh, in terms of eye candy, it obviously shares a lot to the Ashnoff. You know, you can up and down the rear ramp and all the good things and uh, the real life instrumentation was phenomenal. I think the, the cent center deck slides in and out as, but as with the real thing to let the pilots in and out. I will get up. I probably won't, do, won't take them up here in sunny YouTube land because it's not really cool. Uh, I've got a lot of great reviews up there already from sim pilots far superior to what I'll ever be. So that's good. But I will enjoy taking them up at some point. Uh, what else? Speaking of got friends we referred to them before, they've got that, um, that little GAB. Is it a lake? Lake one, lake slider or something? I haven't poodled about with it yet. I've downloaded it. I'm up around freebie up on flatsome.co. Uh, that controversy still rages around up there regarding um, user content and licensing. They settled that, I think, very quickly. I don't think there was any malicious intent. I mean, let's face it, FlightSim.co, like the old days of FlightSim.com, were made by the community for the community. So, I, why a, a couple of them kind of alluded, a couple of the YouTube crews out there kind of alluded to, um, you know, a, a bit of corporatized malice, shall I call it? I think that's that kind of makes no sense. That's just, I just enjoy it with what I've seen of Blasim.co these past three years. I'm sure it was all a healthy mistake. And they seem to have worked out that kink, which is good. Yeah, so the uh, GEV, the ground effect people that they planted, that looks pretty cool. I watched some footage of it. A bit of a lark. I probably didn't mind buzzing around, the Mon um, around Monaco or Mediterranean in that one. But this one immediately caught my eye because it dropped out of the blue. Up on mm, mm, this flight, I think I grabbed it from. Not sure, could have been uh, could have been Sim Market, perhaps. Pickage. There you go. Oh bubba, settle down. So here we are over sunny and Debbie Hills, I think. Southeast Melbourne now. That would be cutting your reservoir over at our pan. And just keep bringing this out until we hit Puritan. But this thing, worth hopping out again. Uh, not many liveries at this point, but if you ever did get the A1R Bureau's STA, then, and that's your bag, then I think you're going to dig this even more so because it's a little more coward juicy. It's a little more cowboy -y. It's a little more seat of your pants. Like I said, the total lack of an F, uh, F VSI really is a bit tricky. It really does. Because it's got quite a low stall speed, about 50 mile an hour. Well, quite high by a lot of standards, but I don't know, 172 standard or whatever. But Nonetheless, it's really, and there's a lot of bounce from those, those beautiful little spattered, that spattered fixed undercarriage there. What's it remind? So many aircraft, so many aircraft. The Miles Brothers obviously come to mind. I think the, there's a couple of Percival open tops. Hell, I think there's even a De Havilland mono and uh, those 20s Avro design. So very common design but again the, the finish on the texture is really what I fell in love with and the flight model itself it's uh, if you love flying but you hate small flight because of the turbulence you probably won't dig this because once you've got FS realistic or VR happening you do feel every bounce and it's well I'm not saying it's haptic but it's you know from a visual perspective it almost is. So yeah, the different liveries, how many at this point, I believe this crit is a winner. Uh, 
And as I said, I really didn't expect to say that. I just thought, you know, it looks a little too pristine, a little too generic perhaps. But um, once I saw the instruments in action and that you're on your own registering what kind of planting you want to achieve with it, I thought, aha, therein lies the rub. So, and like I said, as you can see, we get along at a good speed, a really good speed. So it's a fast little, you know, sports tourer, effectively, open top sports tourer. And quite impressive to that end. I believe, anyway. Uh, yeah, so we got the Boo, we got the Antinov, we've got this, the Chilton D1W. I'll leave a link, if I think of it. Uh, and it'll probably hit the marketplace soon enough. I believe you can get the SDA up there now in the marketplace. A1R Bureau, great effort. It's, uh, I dare say, you know, sooner or later we'll look at all the shortcomings. But anyone who's caught my, any of the crap I come out with, you know that I wouldn't know where to begin with strengths and weaknesses on these things. I can only tell you about the enjoyment or emotion factor. And for me, this ticks all the floaty boats. Like it quite a bit, um, and like I said, it's great run around for anywhere around this area, sunny Melbourne, or you know any city you want to explore. It's the beers, as you can see, it's uh, it's a bit special. I do love the fabric covered wings. I, I love the fabric covered fuselage against the frame. Uh, I'm impressed. I'm not sure if that's some kind of faded burl walnut. I, oh, it might be. The calibre back then was all about coach work. I don't think it would be chipboard, but who knows. MDF maybe. But it is a sweet beefy. Like I said, it's a welcome addition to my stable anyway. Uh, what else? What else is on the horizon? There's some weird and wackies on the horizon. You've got the Technam out from Italy. Wasn't somebody going to release a Piaggio at some point with a uh, pusher props on it? Did we have that already? Red Wing, I think it is due out to release a Bugatti Model 100 that I am excited about because that is one of my favourite weird and wackies. Um, yeah, there's quite a few up and calmers, but it's these little ones that kind of sneak under the radar that impress the heck out of me. I noticed that MS Scenery has released a whole lot of choppers. I'm not sure what they're like, so if anyone wants to leave a comment, regarding them because they're really going to town with the big boys. I think they've got the, the massive mills up there, they've got the massive Sikorsky Sky Crane, gosh knows what else up there. So they're really going hard. I'm not sure what the modelling or flight characteristics are like, but they're enjoyable. But um, yeah, leave a comment if you are flying those puppies and what you think of them. I'm happy with the Mini 500, frankly, it's a chopper to get around in. The old Bell 47G, they are the two, the kind of, after, after poodling about with most of them, I think, uh, they're the ones that impress the heck out of me the most. As you can see, it really is a glorious early autumn day, it's quite warm out at the moment. It's a little bit perfect, in fact, a little bit ideal. Very much like this. I was going to do a twofer with one of the other ones, the Boo or the Antinop or whatever, and I thought, you know what, after flying this the other night, I wanted to rave about it a bit, which I, of course, am duly doing. So, RPM, as you can see, it's not a high revving donk, 2400, uh, you know, so well under the 2800 mark of most modern engines. Oil pressure, we get variations on the uh, temp and oil pressure. No CHT to look after, in spite of the air cooling. 
Um, yeah, just keep your eye on the out, keep your eye on the altimeter, keep your eye on the speed, keep your eye on the slip and turn, and uh, hopefully Bob's your mum's brother. Ahead of us we've got French Island as usual and past that Phillip Island under the races and penguins. And one of my favourite parts of the world. Ahead of us a little town of Turin, pretty much about 12 one-ish. No, 12, sorry. Are beyond that so yeah. All good, sunny Packenham. We've just passed before. Uh, we're above it. There we go. Sunny Packenham right here. Cool, very cool, very cool, cool, cool. Coming down the main drag to grab a coffee on Main Street. Great little part of the world over here down this way. Don't listen to the detractors. I love packing them. So we'll bring her in on four. No, so we'll bring her in on 22. Just to avoid uh, coming in in case there's any gusts coming off the water. And we're keeping our eye out for the Imelda May on our left flying in. Any of you cats who have come up before with me in these things around Turretin, you know you've heard me banging on about the story there. The open fields looking quite pleasant. You know, they've got a, I don't know what they've got down here. Kale, alfalfa. I haven't seen much canola. Kale, alfalfa. And, um, 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 um. What's the other big one? They do mainly primarily for the cattle. It matters not. Theoretically, this should be not too your up road, but we'll just follow it to the end. And we can swing her out to the left, take her out over Curitan, and then bring her. Actually, we can come out over the ocean a bit. Bring her up a bit. Having gone up in an open top, I really love that sensation where you stick your head out and you, you know, like a dog out the car window. It's a great sensation. And deafening. And if you don't hold on to your headset, you can get swept away in a gun. Hastings and Kyiv over there. Yeah, real seat of the pants stuff. So, I won't say long slow because it's actually, like I said, it's quite a grunty speed on this VT. But far more straightforward than the Ryan. Because I think the Ryan you're running from reserve and you've got to be guarded about flicking over to main for um, once you're up in the air with the real thing as with so many aircraft. This you've just got the, your primary tank to work with and uh, you're good to roll. Up she goes. So it would have been a bit of a terror in the day I think. But then again, you can imagine all the flying clubs around Britain back in the 20s and 30s who were going, oh yes, this is so cool, exactly what we need. Um, so over yonder would be Karambara and Leon Gatha. Through then. There's our airport. And you can just make out the Melda May down there. So when we come in, we'll see it. Good 
try and bring her in a little close to the horizon because like I said I kind of want to I'm still feeling my way around the landing on this puppy so a bit of punishment a bit of turbulence they've gone heavy on the turbulence once they've got that in place with this beastie with the flights in itself and these little beasties you really feel it the little tourists but it's all good fun, it's all part of the challenge, isn't it? So this should be Cooey Ruff ahead of us, a little town of Coo Cooey Ruff. So ostensibly, I, uh, I saw it as a four, four knot crosswind coming down from 270, but I don't think, uh, <laughs> I really don't think that's what they're holding true to with it. All good, but yeah, I think um, I really, really do enjoy this. I think it's a great little beast thing. Okay, there's the Imelda Mayo. You can see it there on the shoreline. And they're coming in way too far probably float forever she will probably float forever hopefully not though come on Bubba come on Bubba there's our bounce oh two bounces you kidding five no, there we go. So yeah, you can see it's uh, definitely an interesting beastie to land. Oh, and we no, we didn't run out. Amazing. But um, that's it. So even even bringing in her, her in towards speed, she's got a bit of bounce on her, and she's got a bit of torque on her at takeoff. So hopefully, you know, the A1R bureau crew. We'll do a bit of work in that space or else I'll improve what marginal technique I have. But does it detract from the pleasure of getting around in it? No, not at all. I, uh, I really... Um, I don't know. Maybe I'm just really easily impressed. But I really love it. I really think it's cool and it's going to become a stable for me. There we go. There's our Melda May up yonder. interesting heartbreaking story now we've got the wind up so she, we see she's flying more than four knots okay so somebody was selling porky pies oh good look big beautiful world i thank you for coming up with me um in this little mid-30s escapade vehicle and i'd be interested to know what your thoughts are about this puppy of course of course i would like subscribe all the rest of it and uh, if you dig it, if you don't, then that's okay. We live in a kind of global democracy of sorts. So if you do have the boo, or the caribou, or the antinol, give us a word. See, let me know what you think of it. Um, or the up-and-coming aircraft, you know, who isn't excited about the Bugatti Model 100 from Red Wing. Oh, please. Actually, I shouldn't complain. They gave me the farm and recently, the, the big Goliath, the Goliath. So I'm... Um, I'm still chuffed with that beastie, poodling about with that beastie. Uh, let's just call her quits in front of this puppy, eh? We don't even have a handy on this, I don't think. Do we? No. Okay, so we draw it to a halt. We don't even have that. So, we pull the choke. We do pull the choke, don't we? Yep, that doesn't cut it. We cut off the fuel. Ah, correct. That got it going. Mags off. 
All right, so now that's left the donk full of, you know, the bowl full of fuel. Not great. Anyway, big beautiful world. Stay safe, stay sane. Love ya. Uh, keep flying. Bye.